to welcome. I have Donna Campbell with me today. Hi, Donna, and I'm really, um, I'm really happy to be doing these wee films because I just feel it's nice to sit here in Glasgow town in the rain and introduce some wonderful writers uh, to all of you out there. Um, we would be out doing this normally, as I've said before, but even the Seahorse, the Seahorse publications will be launching books doing things. So I thought we'll just make these wee seahorse films to introduce you to poets. And I've got a performance poet with me today. Donna comes originally from Clydebank, has moved around the world, and we're going to we moved around when we had dad as a youngster. And we're going to talk about that maybe a bit more later on. She works as a creative writing tutor for 25 years now. Uh, as creative writing as therapy for people that have maybe been struggling with their mental health. Um, and from what I hear, she does a brilliant job there. You're going to infiltrate. This is Donna Campbell. Hi, Linda. Thanks for um, inviting me here today. And hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to start off with a poem that I wrote. It was quite a long time ago that I wrote it. Um, I went, just went through a major breakdown, and I just the loneliness I felt was. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't explain it, and I had to, I had to find a way to describe it, um, not necessarily for anybody else, but, but for me. And um, so this poem, uh, like, I, I tried to create an atmosphere that I could uh, place myself in, and um, I wrote this poem, and it's called "The Loneliness of the Long Distance Artist." It's always dark at this time of night. Sitting shyly behind curtains, shadows wait forlornly to catch his movement, hitch a ride in the nape of his neck in a small tenement flat where he takes men friends home for tea, letting them outside in the evening to the sound of trains floating by and with dismembered memories of sleeping with friends, sends shivers down the spine of a wombless moon, who takes leave of its senses when full, and Dorsey's shine as though it were its own. The first time, the first time he dipped his hands into art, the sight of its blood fascinated him. Hot chocolate spilling over cushions, mocked the bird, nailed by the wing, frames a centerpiece at the lip of his mouth. Rumour has it, he sleeps by day and by night he gets painfully drunk in absurdity, naming loneliness, naming loneliness as a prerequisite to madness, and masturbation a quiet flick of the wrist. Done in time to the loud ticker clock, spilling millions, spilling millions of would be babies on the stroke of 12 midnight, where it's always dark at this time of night, and it's where shadows wait. So that was the loneliness of the long distance artist. I'm going to, um, the next poem I'm going to do is, um, again, this was written uh, quite a while ago, and I was, um, questioning my sexuality. Um, so this is called Confused. Celibacy was a toyed with concept for many years, many years of having sex too loud with men, who at the end of the day left a bitter sludge at the back of my throat and a balloon of emptiness in the pit of my stomach that just got bigger and bigger every day, but even bigger at night when they lay beside me, satiated and sleeping. Celibacy was toyed with, but hard to maintain when relationship, relationship and swimming in and out the masculine head was exhausting, all consuming, and I never found any treasures there. There's just something about the man, our society fashions, that leaves me cold and hungry, desperately free to green our grass, the other side of the fence. She was the other side of the fence. She had bigger balls than any guy I've never known. And she didn't need no lottery ticket. She did all she dreamed she should do. She made things work in her hair. Her hair was the blackest hair I've ever saw in a white person. I would love to smell its unwashed scent. Celibacy was toyed with, but it's now in place till I discover just exactly what I'm all about. Yin or Yan. King or Queen, or both. Thank you. Wow. Wow. 
you know, you're so exposed. Uh, we I talked to one of the other writers about that exposure, you know, when you, you read your work like that and you're very, it's very personal. And do you have any misgivings about that ever? I mean, I love it because it's as upfront as you can get about everything there, your own mental health, your own sexuality. You're okay with all of that? Definitely. Look at a lot of the stuff that I write is autobiographical because um, I don't know what else to write about. Um, and also as well, like, I think like w when you have a stage or when you have a platform, for me, this is anyway, um, when you're doing stuff, I, it's really important for me to uh, try and speak about things or to speak about things that people don't normally speak about. And I think as well, like I've had a lot of people come up to me at the end of a performance and they'll say to me, I've never spoke to anybody about that. And so I think it, it encourages people to speak about things that they wouldn't necessarily speak about. Mm -hmm. So that's important to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think 100%. Um, because there's a, a frame of reference that, you know, you might not, a lot of poets might not go into, but there you're, you know, touching on things that probably everyone at different levels, <clears throat> everyone has suffered. And that loneliness you describe in the, lo the, the long distance artist, I mean, you were saying to me when we were talking the other day that, you know, having moved about the country as a child, you think some of the loneliness you feel and you write about is born out of not having a place you called home. Was it important when you were an adult to establish a home for your children? That's funny you asked me uh, that question. Um, that was the most important thing for me, was that um, my kids were born and they grew up in the same place where they were born. Um, and it was to create the secure relationships for them. So my kids have still got friends that they went to mother and toddler group, nursery, school, and that that was the most important thing for me. Sometimes I wanted to get up and run, you know, to continue doing what I'd done in the past. Um, but that was the most important thing for me, um, that they well had done. that security. Well done, because I think, I mean, I made one big move, but I remember I, I didn't have that background where I could see, you know, we were in the same house as we grew up all our lives. And there is something about those tentacles that you put out to people and the earth that you're on, even if it's negative, you know, you, used to, you could maybe have some strange old man that lived up the road, but with your pals, everybody knew who he was, you, you knew who everybody was. And I think those kind of um, community tentacles, whatever they are, are very, very important. And I think of a friend whose father was in the forces and she spent her whole, literally her whole life, every time he moved, trying to plant herself. You know, um, but I think it's interesting you you suggest as well that the that kind of real very powerful uh, presentation of loneliness that you give in a lot of your poetry you think is born of that um, homelessness, shall we call it? Um, and then the other poem there you did, which I, I read, and yeah, you know, I, I think there's a point in everybody's life where you know they're not sure which way it could go. You know, double your bets, as it's, as they say. Or at least try. But I, I think there was something fabulous as well about the otherness of a man beside you there, you know. Now that otherness is part of the attraction, but the otherness there became afterwards the sated man and you're lying beside them, you know, and the description and all the kind of metaphors you used for the sexual act and after it was absolutely perfect. But I think probably both sexes suffer that intrigue about the otherness, but then afterwards the otherness might be too big a bridge, you know. Um, in hindsight, like um, kind of looking at that, because I've not looked at that poem for a while, and then um, it's like going you know, way back then, it's like in my, uh, back in my 40s, and it was like that thing that if you weren't interested in men, well, then you had to be interested in like, yeah. a woman, and it's like that's just not the case, that you don't need to be. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just about taking a bit of quiet time out for myself as well. Yeah. yeah. And then finding that yin and yang could be just in your own living room yourself. Isn't that marvellous? <laughs> you find the other side. Anyway, fantastic. I'm so looking forward to hearing your uh, 
your next points. We could talk all day. I realise that, but we'll do that when we go for a coffee. But uh, I'm very keen to hear your other poems. So I'm just going to let Donna go back here and do a few poems for you folks. This is Donna Campbell. I've got three other poems, and they're all uh, pretty short poems <clears throat> to read. And this one's called Alphotis. My auntie came over the other day with a rake Alphotis. There was one of me when I was away near about six, standing all gallus light in the tap of some middens, with white knee length socks, curling round pale skinny ankles, and the feather cut hair framed the cheek on my face. Aye. Last night I sat with a glass of red wine after getting my lot to their beds and I couldn't help but stare at that wane in the forty, wondering just how much of that wane, 40 years on, still bides inside me now. Okay. This one's called the uh, Task of the Mask and again it's kind of going back to that, that uh, kind of lonely theme and <clears throat> yeah, and having to put a face on uh, when you go out. I make masks from paper mache, skin and teeth and bone. I then hone fresh smiles across some faces, laced blue eyes with glee. I suck back cheeks into fashionable places. And I plump slim lips for free. Then I can kid on. I am me. Kid on. And then the last one is called a uh, Big Fat Moon. Sometimes it feels the moon's touch close. Seems I could push out my hand and pluck from the sky its whole silver white body. But you see, the thing is, I can't put it back just in the spot I found it. So I'll leave it alone and I content myself with watching it instead. Thank you very much. We've got a treat today, folks. We've got Donna Campbell with us here on the Seahorse Short Films. And yeah, every poem just renders itself a marvellous conversation, I have to say. Um, and that last one particularly, I always think, you know, the moon up there, whatever it is, I always think when you look at the, the idea of the nirvana moment or desire attaining, you know, desire only really ever is when it doesn't attain. And I think you perfectly represented that, you know, that, that wanting or yearning. I remember a student of mine years ago, he was going out with a Swedish girl and he, he, he just said, oh, it's just that langtar. He was a young guy, you know, very hip. Langtar. And I said, what does langtar mean? And I've got it written everywhere now. And it's, it's the Swedish word for yearning and longing, just because the kind of person I am. I just I had to write it down. And it is, you just perfectly created that longing and the moon is so beautiful. And then if you actually get the thing, well, it maybe isn't. So it's better just leaving everything as potential. It's absolutely fantastic. I loved it. And then, um, and I can assure you uh, that that wane in the photos is still there, Mrs. <laughs> I can assure you that the cheek and... The waywardness mm -hmm. is ever going to be there, and thank God for it. Um, love that poem as well. I think it is very sweet when you do that and look at old photographs. I think everyone's doing it now. Everyone's getting old albums. I hope maybe thinking about making up more albums because so many of us, the things are trapped in the phones to be lost when we change our phones over. Um, but I think people are looking and finding photographs of themselves and the, the, the really young ones. Uh, you're always going to try to look at the face and think, I wonder where she is. Anyway, she's right here with me. I'm very lucky. Um, so, and the, the, the other one, again, that was that kind of loneliness and, oh, you know, inability to accept not necessarily who you are, but what the world sees you as. So masking up and, you know, the smile on the face and everything. That's such an easy thing I think to do badly now and to make it so cliched and you absolutely didn't it was fantastic you know and the way you just repetition of who you are I am me and kid on I am me at the end so I am um, do you find it difficult to write upbeat poems yeah 
Erdő, Erdő. Um, oh gosh, yeah, very much. Um, and I've tried to write like, like nice, not nice poems, but more upbeat poems, and, and it, it, I just keep going back to. Yeah. I, th I think I've got this mood in me that that creates a rhythm in me, and then the words come out like, and I can't help them. Well, you're an yeah. authentic poet, you know. I remember there's a woman I like. She's called Oh Susanna, a Canadian singer. And she just starts her set, and the place is usually quite quiet. She's fantastic. She just starts and said, I'm really sorry. Every song's going to be like they are, you know, but that's me. And I, I find it myself. I can, I used to do a lot of rock songs and stuff, but the things that um, come out more naturally, blues is easy because it's there in that place, uh, and you can tart it up with a lot of sound to make it hip or make it rhythmical or make it move or make it danceable. The lyrics are usually pretty dark anyway, but the place I feel happiest is just in that singer song. And, and yeah, the lyrics are, um, but the thing is, that's probably where they're authentic. It doesn't mean I think you're necessarily a sad person. I think it's just trying to express your inner heart's history sometimes. I'm, I'm not a sad, I'm not a sad person and, no, oh gosh, no. Um, but that's just because I don't really talk about anything. I don't talk about me or that. But I suppose I'm talking about myself, and it's coming out in that. But I, I love darkness. I, I'm really interested in like the shadow of ourselves. So yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. I loved it, and I could talk all day. Everybody, we're really lucky today. We've got Donna Campbell with us, who's a fantastic writer and performer, and when the world shifts in its axis and we can get out, you have to come with me to watch her. We have to sit around the table and watch this girl perform. Thank you very much, Donna, for joining us today. Thank you so much for asking me, seriously. Really, I feel really chuffed. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Next week. Bye. Bye-bye.